What was the most hate you've ever had in your career? And what like what was like a stumbling thing? Because I learned, believe it or not, from the Bobby Lee situation when all that shit spiraled. I had the same thing. I love Bobby, but he's mad at me. And right I, now? And I took responsibility for it. Yeah, well, well with Bobby, uh, I, w the, Brendan was getting a lot of hate. And then... Uh, Justifiably so. Said, Here's where it's coming from. And uh, I made the mistake of jumping to conclusions. I spoke... You cucked out, Brian. You b actually believed that Bobby Lee was behind the fucking fire in a kid subreddit. One of the most redacted takes in the history of all time. Brendan probably got scammed. That's actually a sad part about the whole thing. Brendan probably got fleeced out of money because of a genuine worry that he had that the internet was dogpiling on him. And instead of him realizing and maybe analyzing and thinking, hold on, what part of I played in this? How am I making people react like this to me? Why are there 100 thousand plus homeless cats in that subreddit dedicate every day to tearing apart every little thing that i say maybe it's me look in a mirror no instead what he did like a true narcissist is that he looked outside externally and tried to blame somebody else and he blamed of all people within the jerry extended universe within anyone else associated with the babaverse within anyone associated with that fucking community he blamed bloody bobby lee who is essentially an adult baby. He isn't caught, as someone said in my chat before, in a state of arrested development. Love the guy, bless him, but he's the most immature, 60, near 60-year-old 60 you've ever seen in your entire life. Do you know what I mean? Maybe he's got some developmental issues. That could be a legitimate thing. But to think somebody like Kim could be, um, have the acumen, could have the mental um, wearable to kind of sit down and put together this elaborate plot of orchestrating all these people in this subreddit to attack you is ridiculous in the extreme. And for somebody like Brian, who you think is a little bit more educated, a little bit more well-rounded, a little bit more astute, a little bit more rational because of his experiences in Afghanistan and working and going to private schools, all this nonsense, you would think he'd have a lot more discernment and be like, you know what, Brendan, let's chill out. Maybe it's not Bobby Lee. I know you have a problem with Bobby Lee now because you try to fuck his girlfriend because she's got big tits and shit, I know. But let's relax. Maybe it's not Bobby Lee. Maybe it's somebody else. No, he jumped on it as well. That's a ridiculous part of the whole story. He jumped on it without even second thinking it, without taking a breath, without analyzing the evidence. Which And the evidence, what was the evidence? The evidence was a couple of pages of source code, right? That guy, or whoever the guy is, a collective of these hackers, basically went on the Fire in the Kid subreddit, clicked right-click, scrolled down to view source page or whatever it may be called and printed pages of html and made it look like that was the code that they got in terms of breaking and uncovering bobby lee's elaborate plot to bring bring fucking brendan shaw down what nonsense he chucked away a nearly 20 plus relationship uh friendship actually with bobby lee and everybody else is damaged i think the bobby lee thing it didn't only affect relationship with bobby lee i'm sure it affected brian kind of relationship with other people who are best friends of bobby lee he threw away 20 plus years of friendship for fucking brendan shaw even if Brendan Shaw is paying him 25 grand a month, which is what's being alleged, courtesy of BGL, aka Mark Harley, even if this is the truth, surely your friend of 20 plus years deserves a phone call where you're not shouting at them, where you're not threatening them with Bobby, with fucking Joe Rogan, where you, maybe you can talk to them like a friend and say, hey, I know this is dumb, I know this is stupid, I know you never do this, but I need to hear it from you. Did you do this? No, he didn't. He flew off the handle and went and cucked out for his friend and now look at him. Now look. You're basically married to the guy until until death do you part. You're done. Finished. Horrible. Out of turn. And I love Bobby. I've known him for, I, I love the guy. And I've known him for way too long. And I was wrong. And I, and I, you know, I've apologized and everything else. And so I, it's my, one of my biggest regrets I've ever Really? Done. Yes. I love him. Yeah, because it was He's, dumb. I love Duh. You both have that same story. <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, you got to admit, I, I, you have to own up to what you did. And I, mm -hmm. and, and we had a talk. And I said, you know, you're right, I'm wrong, and I'm 100% wrong, and you're 100% right in this. And I jumped to conclusions, and I should have given you the benefit of the doubt. And Duh. I didn't. And uh, I, th that's all I have to say about it. I'm not going to make excuses for myself. How did you take fucking, it? I was, out, I was outside of myself. I was defending my Brendan, who I love. You wasn't outside of yourself. That's I how you always are. I was, I was defending him, and the wrong guy was, the, he, Bobby was 100% the wrong person. I'm okay, I, honestly, the same with BGO. At the time when BGO was, that's why maybe I didn't take too old when BGO kind of, you know, went out there and started airing out Brendan's dirty laundry. I'm, I'm in a minority here. I'm okay with people being Brendan Shub defenders and best friends. Like, I'm actually okay with it. I think it's fine that he may have people around him who legitimately just turn a blind eye to all these faux pas and his personality, def, you know, faults and his horrible behavior, whatever. That's your friend. That's all you're meant to do. 
What I don't like is just like this kind of a this delusion, this kind of idea that he there's no reason why no one would not like the guy. Like I think you should, in my opinion, when you're friends with somebody, that people are like I don't. You guys are the same, but I have I know people or I know friends that I know other friends of mine don't like. I know why they don't like them, but I'm okay liking them for what I like them for. But I'm not. I'm not fucking. Uh, I'm not fucking blind to why someone else might think my friend's a cunt because I know he's a cunt, but I like him even though he's a cunt. That's the thing I don't like. So that's why he jumped out the window because somebody doesn't jump out the window for their friend if they don't understand both sides. Because if you understand both sides, you'd be like, you know what, Brian, Brendan, chill out. I'll talk to Bobby. Don't worry. I'll relax. I'll get there. That's what you would do. You would just jump out the window straight away. So I think that's the issue I had of it a little bit because this means with Brian that he doesn't see why some people wouldn't like Brendan. He just seems, he's a great guy, he's, a, he's an amazing guy, beast of a dad, beast of a podcaster. He doesn't see the other side of things, which you should, if you're the, if you're friend for that long, you should really. To put the heat to on. To put the heat on. Yeah. And I was, I was just wrong. And uh, sometimes you're just dead wrong. And I was. And I said it, and I, 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 I've, I've owned it, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes you fuck up, man. And sometimes you have to pay the price. And um, and I hope you know I just miss him, but I haven't talked to him in a little bit. Yeah, really. But it's not a bad. It's not. It's not like that. I mean, I I I just think, I think Bobby has said like he just needs boundaries, man. Bobby, you know, Bobby was always the guy who was, you know, the funniest guy in the room. But people take advantage. Because it's hard. You know, people like uh, you know, he's a man. You can't treat somebody. You can't treat somebody, especially if you're a friend, with a lack of respect. And I think I did that to him. If I look back on it. I didn't, I didn't, I was outside of myself. I had a moment and I was, it was my, it was one of my worst. Not a moments. moment, mate. And, not a moment, um, mate. Not a moment. I, I don't believe in the slightest. That Bobby Lee thing to me exposed all of them because what it exposed was that they used Joe Rogan's, because even, let's think about it now. Maybe that's actually the reason why the relationship isn't the same anymore with Joe Rogan because maybe Joe Rogan didn't know. Maybe he genuinely didn't know because he's legitimately like away, he's rich, he's powerful. People don't even want to take, get, you know, bring back everything to his doorstep. But I think, because if you pay attention, Tiger Belly from time, Bobby Lee was saying from ages ago, even when everyone was saying, oh, the comedy store is amazing, it's aggressive, it's aggressive it's ever been. Bobby Lee would say, yeah, it's amazing, but there's, there's this kind of boys club feel around it. He would never name names, he would never say who it was, but you get the idea that the Joe Rogan extended universe friends and family would make the vibe of the comedy store a bit weird. And because, you know, um, Bobby Lee's a bit of an effeminate kind of dude and a bit small and weak and frail and shit, he doesn't necessarily vibe with that kind of humor that those guys have, right? Dick jokes and all this sort of stuff. And, and all, they're both, they're, like, everyone thinks they're fucking Navy SEAL and retired fighters, all this sort of nonsense, right? He doesn't vibe with it. So he can make reason why he would maybe not feel comfortable. But I also think outside of that, they all would use Joe Rogan's name behind Joe Rogan's back, whether to get themselves deals, restaurant reservations, to intimidate people, to get in certain doors, so maybe open certain, you know, to maybe get certain deals. I'm sure of it. And this Bobby Lee thing was a thing that kind of maybe exposed it. And then Joe was like, hold on, huh? You guys are doing what? Like, and, and, and the thing with Joe, he genuinely loves Bobby Lee. He's the one that's been pushing him to do a special from ages. He wants to get him on the show for a long time. Whatever it may be, like Joe actually loves Bobby Lee. He speaks about Bobby Lee's stand-up comedy all the time, about how much he murders on stage, about he needs to write more material because he's so funny. Come on tour with me, do a special. Joe really does actually love Bobby, even though Bob, Bobby probably doesn't think you know, the same, maybe if he was like, a bit intimidated by Joe, he actually has love for him. So when he found out these guys were not only using his name behind his back, but also using it to down somebody he actually generally actually likes and appreciates the comic, he was like, nah. And if one thing Joe doesn't really fuck around with is like comic stuff. Like, you know, he can fuck around with stuff, but when it comes to comic stuff, he's like, nah, he's a bit of a purist in that regard. So he backed out. So I think that's what happened. That exposed it. That's what exposed it. My theory anyway, my theory. I have to live with that. But um, how long ago was this? about uh now a year but it's okay but it, I, either way i think it, the lesson is if you fuck up and i did you better own up to it and admit to it and and uh and he didn't deserve it and and you know i love the guy so what's the best thing? that's la talking to, i love the guy he doesn't love you man he doesn't love you rightfully so also and i'm glad to hear what he said in the podcast that he doesn't speak to him anymore because i think in another world um if joe rogan was still in Aust if joe rogan was still in la bobby lee would probably have to go back and lick their boots he'd probably have to apologize even though he just done nothing wrong bobby lee would have to go and basically you know spread his butt cheeks and say hey you know please go again 
because of how powerful and how like influential those guys are in that scene. But the fact that Joe Rogan moved away, it kind of helped him to kind of steadfast, you know, stand in his freaking, in his shit and say, nah, you, you basically crossed the line. It's just too much now. You're not my friend anymore. And then kind of leave it there. So that's a good thing. thing you can do for you to be so self-aware to be like, okay, this was on me to take full responsibility. Most people don't want to. It's too no, hard I to always admit, do. you know? If I fuck yeah. up, man, if I fuck up, I'll own it. And that's all I can say. I'm not perfect. I, I you know, that's, that's, uh, that's. Whenever, whenever pieces of shit do something that's bad, that's demonstrably bad, they will say that I'm not perfect. I'm human. Just don't do it, mate. It's not a big deal. Honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal. Brendan was annoyed at the, at the fight and the kid. It was going, it was getting too much for him. When they exposed him for handing that f note to that girl, I'm sure Brendan's household was an absolute nightmare, right? That, that, w that wife of his, the Mexican, she must've been going nuts. Brendan's life must've been in a horror for those first couple of weeks. You know, Gringo Papi going crazy, bad reviews. His wife maybe threatening to leave him over that flipping clip. I'm sure life was not good in a Brendan Shaw household. So he went crazy and decided to accuse everybody for everything. I understand Brendan's rage. But, but, but Brian should have been the one to be like, okay, calm down. Let me talk to Bobby. Let me sort this out because you've known the guy longer, blah, blah, blah. He should have been the cooler head. Brendan's allowed to go crazy and be annoyed because he's he sees those guys as enemies. The Fire and the Kids subreddit guys and uniques and shit. Maybe even me, whatever. He's, I understand that. But Brian should have been a cool one. He should be like, okay, relax. Let's take it easy. And then approach Bobby Lee in a approachable manner, respectable, said, hey, let's talk about this. Instead, he went off the fucking handle, jumped out the window crazy, started speaking to that guy. Imagine, imagine what you're saying on the phone to him. Must have been insane. And now look at him. I'm not perfect. The thing I regret in my life is speaking to him that way. And I apologize the next day, but um, it doesn't matter sometimes. Sometimes you say some shit and... Cuts just, deep. Yeah, and just be careful. Be careful. And uh, I should have known better. I was, uh, I was reading from the Bible. Uh, and it, it described the tongue as the sharpest sword. And be careful how you thrust it. And, and it just <laughs> dawned on me that people always say, oh, that cuts deep. You know how some people are like, oh, I forgive you. But sometimes, man, you cut so deep that like... It, it really there may not be forgiveness or it's never the same or they can't forgive they you. can forgive you but they can't forget it yeah and that's, then that's fair and you have to own that yeah you know but I, I think um like here's the thing about about life keep your promises don't take what doesn't belong to you and, and if you fuck those two things up make amends yeah. make amends dude don't you know don't blame don't accuse somebody of some shit you know or 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 uh, just attack somebody because somebody told you something and then expect you're going to walk away from that. Mm -hmm. You better be careful about how you do that, especially a friend. I, lo especially I love your mindset, like man. Yeah. I really do. I really love your mindset. If a lot of men... <laughs> it took so much shit. <laughs> what people were saying. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. What is that? What is that? What is that saying? Yeah. X, you know, please say you don't want smoke with Red Bar. It will help you in the long run. Why would I say I want... What, when did I say I want smoke with Red Bar? When did, I, when did I even say that? Why do I Why do I have to say I don't want smoke if I didn't say I wanted to smoke? <laughs> what a bizarre thing to say. What? Huh? Red Bar's a... Red Bar's a legend. It's an OG. That rant he said about Brenda, everyone should be hating... What did he say? What did he say? He said about... um. He, doesn't understand. he thinks Brent, he should, Chris Lear should get more hate than Brenda does. I understand where it was coming from, but it did come a bit. It's a bit wild. That was a mad take. But everyone kept saying, oh, yeah, he's a constant contrarian. But I didn't say I wanted to smoke a red bar. When did I say I wanted to smoke a red bar? Where are people creating these illusion, these illusionary beefs? And had this type of mindset, I think we'd be in a lot more peaceful circumstances. Well, maybe I, I'm more at peace because I, I tell the truth. Like, just tell the truth, man. I fucked up. I fucked up. Mm -hmm. And I regret it. And, and I don't blame uh, Bobby for being mad at me. And we had a talk, man. We had a real talk, you know, yeah. after all of it. Uh, then obviously online, you get all this crazy shit. No, you man. didn't have a real talk after it. Stop lying. He's trying to make himself look good. No, nothing happened, bro. He's not your friend anymore. Go, stop lying. You, you, go ask him for dinner now. Go invite him out for dinner. Invite him out for a drink. Let's see what happens. These guys trying to sugarcoat things. You fucked up. Leave it there. We talked. We had a good talk. Man, man, talk. Man, man. But especially from his audience, his yeah, audience but, is cutthroat. Yeah, but they're all they, they, but they, they love him, and I get it. Yeah, I love him, you know, and they love him. They're like, hey, fucking, what is this bullshit? You know, what are you a fucking bully or a scumbag? Well, in that moment, I was. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I'm not, but in that moment, and especially what's crazy is that 
the, the hardest thing is if it was somebody I didn't like, I don't give a fuck. But it's somebody I love, like that guy, yeah. who mm-hmm. I have history with. Mm-hmm. We spent a lot of time together, man. That's like that's. that's you guys are both on Mad TV. Yeah, correct? well, we're not at the same time, but I mean, you're talking about a guy who I watched. We were together, like at the comedy store and doing yeah. stand up, and he's the. Hey, what's this? The Red Bar Tribe has sent warnings about you, dog. I like you. I don't want to see you as a red. Uh, bro, man, this is so ga. I don't like using that word, but whatever, man. If I'm an enemy, I'm an enemy. Ain't it? I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit like you're not scaring me in internet words. Red Bar's cool, and I enjoy some of his content. It is what it is. If he wants to feature me as a... Was it a featured fool? I guess I'm a featured fool. I guess I'll get fucking FF fucking tattooed on my fucking head. I don't really give a fuck. Like, whatever, innit? Congratulations, Red Bar Mafia. Like, pick up you guys, innit? If I'm the enemy, I'm the enemy. or Whatever. Cool. Right. He's the fucking best. We we do nothing on this platform. We all just regurgitate the same nonsense. We watch these far more successful guys talk about their nonsense. We dissect their personalities for shits and giggles. And we keep it moving. It really isn't that serious. Now you've got fucking tribes and mafias. Imagine being a grown man calling yourself the Red Bar Mafia or any mafia. Don't even call yourself the Random Show Mafia. Just watch this entertainment, laugh and giggle with me, have a drink, chill out, relax, whatever you're doing at home, and then go to sleep. It's not that serious. It's not that deep. Tribe. Mafia. You know, Collective. Huh? What? He's anybody who has a problem with Bobby is uh is that that they have the problem. You, you know? had the problem, so, didn't so, you? So don't be surprised if his fans love the shit out of him and come after anybody that fucking treats him poorly. No, that's he that's, deserves it. Yeah, that, yeah that, 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 it. their fans are right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, again, this all comes back to if you fuck up in your life, it, it's you just own it and just take the fucking pain because you can, don't hide behind some bullshit, man. Mm-hmm. And I, you'll feel I, like you spoke like you spoke about a lot better about yeah. yourself with yourself yeah. but I mean it seems like you have a really wonderful heart so I'm sure sometimes people just need time and <laughs> yeah. I don't doubt that in a little bit he'll realize like oh that's a quality person so. in my life I hope you know? so I miss him yeah but no, I he'll also, he'll come- no he won't come back around he won't that's fucking over anyway um, it's over good thing actually good riddance probably in that regard Um, you know come on man like regardless again this kind of person doesn't have any friends and then chucking away a 20 year friendship over some podcast guy who's getting annoyed about people talking about a subreddit is clearly woo serious but anyway what can you do